Hello, my name is Matt Max, and I just finished the first part of my Mandel 90 build. Originally, I intended to finish it in one session, but I really needed a break, so I'm going to do it in two sessions instead. And because it was a lot more difficult to put together than I anticipated, and because it took longer to put together than I anticipated, I guess that's actually a good thing. So as you can see, the Mandel 90 is based on sheet material. I'm using 12mm MDF here, but you can use any sheet material for so acrylic, dye bond, whatever. Uh, as it turns out, it's actually a little bit more difficult to put together than I thought it would be originally. From looking at all the printed parts that I all printed out myself, it looked like it would be really easy to put together, since all the parts actually seem to have been made in a way that makes them easy to put together. For example, the bar clamps you see on the sheet right there, um, they have elongated holes, so that your if your drilling holes are not perfectly aligned, you can still wiggle them around a bit to make sure that both of your smooth rods of the y-axis are exactly parallel to each other. However, since there isn't really a proper manual yet, although I'm going to make one, you often end up in a position where you have to backtrack because you don't really know, know the right order of things and it's really easy to forget to add some stuff. Um, you have one big SDL file, it's called, or SCAD file rather, it's called main SCAD. That's a whole machine basically and uh, you can set it to exploded view and it's modeled down to a screw level, so props to for Nophead, uh, to Nophead for doing that. I'm sure it was a lot of work, <laughs> but that's obviously really helpful because, well, you see every single screw, every single nut, washer, everything. So yeah, that's cool. But sometimes the order in which you add stuff really counts. And, well, since I didn't know how to do it when I put it together, there's a lot of backtracking in this video. And actually, uh, I killed a couple of linear bearings. Here's where I kill linear bearing number one. <laughs> so I have to buy a couple new ones. A couple, I have to buy two new ones. Anyway, so the other big thing about the Mantle 90 are those ribbon cables. Ribbon cables are, interestingly enough, rated for 300 volts, 105 degrees Celsius and 1.2 amps per wire. So if you have a 2.6 wire ribbon cable, that's over 26 amps you can get uh, through that. That's uh, like 20... 30 amps almost, that you can get through it even a little bit more. So that's really impressive and cool. And that also means you can power your heated print bed with a ribbon cable. And your heated print bed is a part of your printer that needs the most of the current. So that's really cool because ribbon cables look really neat and what you can do really easily is you can just add a sheet of uh, polypropylene, uh, yeah, a polypropylene strip basically. And that will enforce the minimum bend radius to it you can see me adding it here in a second. And that means that your cables cannot break. They kind of roll off and, and like, like they are in an electric chain, basically. And it's really cheap and it's awesome. It looks really good. You will have no more cable failures. It's really easy to organize all your cables. You have no longer cables hanging around everywhere. I even, with my pressure, I even had cables caught in in certain screws and stuff, so that sucked. Now with this, this can't happen. So you can see, you can see the ribbon cable here. Uh, you, can't, you cannot see how it kind of wraps around below the print pad. I don't have the light to show you that, actually. <laughs> but you will see later when I assemble these ad axes, you will see it working. It's pretty, pretty awesome in my opinion. So yeah, this is the first part where I have to backtrack a lot because I actually forgot the anchors that hold the bells to the, uh, to the Y carriage. So I have to remove all the smooth rods again, then add the anchors, then I remember that I forgot to put two nuts in the anchors and I have to remo remove them all again, then I put them on again, and then I put them on in the wrong way. So I have to put them on like three times, which kind of sucks because they are using nylock nuts. Basically every screw in this build either has a star washer or nylock nuts, so that vibration will not cause them to get loose over time, which, well, it's awesome in itself. Like, in theory, it's awesome, but, you know, it, it's... Screwing into nylock nuts takes some time and some force, and it can be a little bit fiddly. However, Nophead made it so that you have a ton of different length of screws, so that you do not have to screw 
for too, too long. I believe uh, in a second you will see me here using a really useful trick, yeah. If you do not get nuts into the nut traps or the plastic parts, what you can do is you can just take a lighter and you screw the nut onto a screw and you heat the nut up and then just take the screw to pull it into the nut trap. This way it kind of melts its way in. Um, obviously it shouldn't make it too hot because if you do it with nylon nuts, what will happen obviously is that you meld the nylon ring that's in there and that's what should stay there. So. Oh, by the way, you can also turn nylock nuts into normal nuts. Like, I was out of normal M3 nuts, so I had to turn a couple nylock nuts into M3 nuts. You basically just take a torch and you heat it up for two minutes and then it's a normal nut, because the nylon ring burns away. Probably not too healthy, but it works. So yeah, um, there are actually two different anchors for the Y-axis. And the reason being that the belt actually wraps around 180 degrees. So it is teeth down, it goes teeth down around the pulley, obviously, so it can grab into the pulley, and then you rotate it 180 degrees, and then you wrap it with the smooth side down around the, um, around the bearing. This means that it will move a little bit more smoothly because the teeth, um, Usually you, you get, when you print, you get this, um, this pattern in your prints, and the pattern is exactly the same a pattern that you have in your belt. And the reason you have this pattern is because uh, the T's don't uh, run uniformly over your bearing. So by rotating at 190 degrees, you get rid of this effect. So that's quite cool. All right, so now I'm assembling the superstructure. The superstructure of this printer is made out of five sheets of, well, sheet material. Again, 12 millimeter MDF. In my case, it's held together by printed L brackets. In my opinion, you should just buy L brackets. <laughs> uh, it's going to be better in almost every single respect. It's going to be more stable. It's not really expensive buying an L bracket. And it also, you know, printing those can take a lot of time because they're 95% solidity. So they're basically a solid block of plastic. So they need a lot of plastic and they take quite a long time to print, actually. So by just buying them, you don't lose anything, actually. You save some time and material. And you even gain stability, you know, which is great. I guess the reason Nopad is actually using... Here, I'm just making sure it's 90 degrees. That's the reason it's, it's named Prindle, uh, Mendel 90, after all, because everything is 90 degrees to each other. And ensuing that all the axes are also exactly 90 degrees to each other or orthogonal, I should say. Which is cool because, you know, <laughs> we have an orthogonal coordinate system that we're using in uh, in this 3D printer, so it's nice when the machine itself is orthogonal, actually. It's kind of a must. Well, okay, actually there are machines that do a conversion from orthogonal to hexagonal and stuff like that, but oh well. So what I wanted to say, uh, I guess Nop had used printed L brackets, so you need less with vitamins. Vitamins being things that you have to buy that are not printed out. And you know, that's great. That's always a goal for the wrap wrap machine. But you know, for us as a first world, it doesn't really matter. Well, as long as you're not, um, as long as you're not an idealist, I guess, <laughs> it doesn't really matter whether or not you use printed parts or actually byte parts. And, you know, the L brackets work fine, so that's no problem. Cool, so as you can see here, the Z-axis is also screwed directly... Oh, in the background you see this 3D model, by the way. As you can see here, the Z-axis is also directly screwed into the sheet, and you, get, you actually get a drill guide with a printer. The drill guide is rendered for your machine. You can actually change your machine. There are easy to change config files where you can change stuff like screw sizes, a printer size, what sheet material you're using, and then it it calculates the the drill guides for you, and you just get a PDF file that you can print out. And basically, you in the end you get a kind of a poster of multiple A4 sheets or whatever paper format you're using. Oh, and here's where I actually destroy my second <laughs> linear bearing. Uh, the, that, the, the X motor bracket that you see right here, 
that's a horrible, horrible print. I had to print it four times before I got to this version and I ran out of PLA, so I had to finish it. Also, the print stopped two times mid-print, like the extruder stopped extruding, so it's a really horrible print. And as it turns out, both of the linear bearings are not perfectly aligned, so I had to kind of bend the material, I had to reheat and bend it, and that's why I destroyed my second linear bearing. Oh well. Uh, the next thing about this is that it, that it was actually a lip to the right. So at the beginning I thought that my motor didn't fit, but it actually fits. You just have to put it in straight and then rotate it while it's in this cage. Yeah, here I'm just mounting the brackets that hold the... <laughs> yeah, try heating the motor because I did realize that you have this lip. But even with this lip, because it's such a horrible print and because the height is all messed up, the screw holes don't fit perfectly anymore. So I there's a lot of re-drilling and reheating and so on and so forth. That's a part I definitely have to redo as soon as possible. I'm not sure that it will hold for long. <laughs> I can see it just breaking, so... But that's the only part that's really, really bad. Like, the, there are a lot of other parts that don't look good, but they work just fine and they're really stable. But the motor bracket is just almost non-functional, so... That I will end up reprinting. <laughs> See how long it takes me to actually get it in, oh well. <clears throat> anyway, this is where I find out that the smooth rods that I had were too short. And the other smooth rods that I had were too long. So those are too short. Damn it. So I switched them out for longer ones. And they are too long. Damn it again. So, But it's no big deal. Because you can just unscrew that motor holder and the bar clamp on top of the Z-axis and just put it a couple more centimeters to the left or to the right. And there you go. But I, I haven't done it here. I will do it tomorrow. Again, at this point, I very much wanted a break already. Okay, I just wanted to to be done for today because I already broke two linear bearings and I was kind of frustrated. Okay, now comes the the part I hate the most about rep rep machines is putting in the threaded rod for the z-axis because uh, if you don't know, there is a spring. You can probably see the spring here, and you have to kind of push down the threaded rod and then screw it into a nut that's below the uh, the motor bracket. So you have to push down and screw and it's it's it sucks. And then you have to screw in these red rods. That you have to screw these red rods by hand down, which is which also sucks because all those threads are biting into your fingers. So they actually make contact with the motors. So that sucks. Uh, the spring is there for a good reason though. The spring is there because Without the spring, there would be nothing actually forcing your two nuts apart, and that means you could get some Z-axis backlash. So the spring is there for good reasons. Cool, so now just assembling the Z-couplings, and finally, final thing I do is I'm going to assemble the rim cable for the Z-axis. I'm not using a polypropylene sheet, uh, they're actually pretty cheap, but the shipping is expensive, so instead I'm just recycling some plastic parts I had that are made out of PP and are 0.5 millimeters. And in the back you can already see the ribbon cable, it looks uh, really nice and orderly. It's pretty cool, I like it a lot. Anyway, uh, that will wrap up the first part of this build. I will finish this machine today. My name is Matt Max. thanks for watching this video. And tune in next time.